My name is James Beecher. Hello to you all. Uh, I'm Research and Development Manager at Citizens Online. Uh, if you are on Twitter, you can find myself and Citizens Online on there. I'm at James D. Beecher and Citizens Online is Citizens Online 1. Hi, I'm Francis. I work with James and I do uh, data work with James and also look after our website and our um, project website for Brighton and Hove uh, project. And uh, yeah, good to be on the on the call this morning. Um, I'm also on Twitter and I'll be monitoring the chat during this session. So I'm trying to respond and make note of your questions. Thanks Francis. Uh, just in case any of you don't know, Citizens Online has been going since the year 2000. We have worked around the UK and we help organisations to ensure that the switch to digital doesn't exclude people. Today's plan will be to have a very short intro from myself. I'll try and get through it as quickly as possible. We'll then move on to the main content, which is tips, resources and reflections from Digital Unite. And then about half the session, as I mentioned earlier, will be questions and answers and some signposting to further resources that are hopefully helpful to you. Quickly, what's the problem we're trying to deal with? We know from data produced by the Consumer Digital Index, which is based on Ipsos Mori service da survey data, which they do face to face and published by Lloyds, that around 22% of UK adults do not have the essential digital skills they need for day to day life. That's about 12 million people. And we also know that those who are most likely to be digitally excluded are also those who are most at risk of the virus. In other words, older people, or people with long-term health conditions. This is a real problem when some of the things that those people need to do at the moment, such as registering as high risk for priority supermarket slots, or indeed doing online shopping, require you to be online, as do applying for universal credit and other benefits around loss of income. How do we know Digital Unite? Well, we've been working with them since about 2013, if not before, most recently through the One Digital programme, which is a digital inclusion initiative, also including Age UK, the Scottish Council for Voluntary Organisations and Clarion Futures. Um, we have a number of digital champions, people who help others with digital skills, registered through Digital Unite's Digital Champions Network, which they'll be telling you about shortly. We've got about a thousand digital champions who are registered on there through one of our projects and they're very happy to be on it. So we wanted to share with you um, a little bit about what we think is good about the Digital Champions Network. Uh, since just July 2017, we've been recording some of the numbers. One of the things we like about the DCN is it enables us to do that. And just the sessions that have been recorded on there, we've helped around 5,000 individual learners. And as a data analysis team, myself and Francis have been able to do some interesting um, things with the data that we collect through that system. So that's, that's pretty much it from me. Before we move on to Digital Unite, I'd just like to launch our first live poll today. So we just want to ask you, who have you been helping or who would you like to help with digital skills right now? So I'm going to launch this poll. There's a lot of options on this poll because it's got two sets. It's got a list of people that you have helped friends, family, neighbours, existing learners, people that you were already in contact with face-to-face -face before social distancing, and new learners. And then it's got those same options for if you would like to help those people. And you can tick as many options as you like. So I'll launch that poll now. There's 70 of you on the call now, which is great. And if you can start Filling that in. Can people see the poll? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can see it? Yeah, great. So we're starting to get some results in. That's excellent. Francis, can I just uh, ask you, hopefully as a host, you can see the results of this poll. If you could get a quick screenshot, because I don't think that gets saved in the video. So we've just got about 17 of you waiting to still vote. Some of you may not be able to if you're calling in, so we'll just wait a couple more seconds. 
That looks like we're there. 90% of you have voted, so I'll just end the polling. You should be able to see the results. So what we can see is that about half of you have already helped friends or family. A slightly lower proportion have helped learners, but actually a significant proportion, 40% have helped new or existing learners. And then a lot of you, the most for people you'd like to help is people saying that you'd like to help new learners. So hopefully today we can talk about some ways that you can identify those learners and help them. Um, and it's good to see that people are still wanting to help friends, family and neighbours as well. So thanks Fran, have you been able to get a screenshot of that? Great, so I'll stop sharing the results. And let's move on to Kathy. Thanks, James, and um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kathy Valdez, and I'm here from Digital Unite, as James mentioned. I'm here uh, with my colleague, Catherine Teed. Catherine, do you, do you want to say hi? Hello, hi, everyone. Great. Um, and do you want to go to the next slide, James? Like Citizens Online, we've also been supporting people with uh, basic digital skills for a very long time. In fact, we started last century. So we work with a, a wide range of organisations and individuals um, across the whole of the UK. Um, and we work with organisations like Citizens Online as part of bigger groups as well to, to provide the training and support for digital champions. Because in the last five years, we've really focused on that model of having um, intermediaries as the most effective way to support those with low or no digital skills. Next slide. Um, so at the heart of what we do is our Digital Champions Network, which James has already uh, alluded to. And it's a web-based learning platform with a suite of interactive learning, e-learning courses, a load of resources and support for digital champions, but also for organizations that are running projects like um, James mentioned about the reporting features and that kind of thing. But all of our foundation digital champion courses and project manager courses are CPD certified. Um, and all of our other courses have a Mozilla Open Badge from the Open Badge system. We have a whole community of wonderful champions who also give us loads of new ideas, share their feedback from their work and encourage each other via the Digital Champions Network uh, online forum and surveys and other things that we we run there for them and we know that our champions love learning and we also know that having the right information to help people in different contexts with different skills is essential so we're always trying to develop new courses and new resources so this year um, we launched our um, digital champions health resources which is a dedicated part of the network for helping people manage their health. So people might want to access information about health things, get advice, manage their health online and use online services from the NHS and their local GP surgeries. And this is a course that shows you how to help people do that. So before we designed the course, we were keen to understand what the real barriers were for learners. Um, what was particularly interesting is that not only did half of the learners not know that they could access health information online, but actually one quarter of the digital champions themselves didn't know about the NHS app and other things like that to help people. So um, it was quite an eye opener for us really, but it helped inform what we covered in the course. Um, so because of what I've just mentioned about people not even knowing that there were ways of managing your health online and access to the NHS app and their GP surgeries, our very top tip would have to be um, to let anyone you're supporting um, or helping know about the options that there are, uh, especially now when people, as we've mentioned, are not able to get out and about. Uh, it's also important to bear in mind that the person you're helping may well have an accessibility issue. So do a bit of research beforehand about the various tools available to support them. We have some bite-sized accessibility courses on the Digital Champions Network, if you're a member, and there is information um, and tips from other webinars, and I think AbilityNet are going to be here next week as well. Um, in fact, our courses, our accessibility courses, were made um, online with, um, with AbilityNet support. 
We often talk about selling the sizzle at Digital Unite, and that's also true for health. It can be really well uh, worth promoting all the benefits of managing your health online, um, especially now when, when people can't get out. But it, there's something about having time to do a bit of research, not being rushed with the information, and those are the things that being online enable you to do. And the other really important thing um, we think is signposting to reliable resources and showing learners how to discern um, what's good advice and what's bad advice, avoiding the rubbish sites, thinking about who's written this information, what's its source, um, why have they written it, are they trying to sell you something or promote their own uh, services, and when was it written, is it up to date? So these are all really good ways of helping people access the best information online. Um, I just want to say one more thing about that was that the Guardian uh, last Sunday said that now 71% of consultations are virtual, um, which is a complete reversal of how it was this time last year, just showing how the uh, coronavirus already affected um, the way that people access that help. So um, we also know that many champions report that having access to quality health information can really reduce stress and anxiety and help with mental health. But for some, dealing with mental health issues themselves, learning new skills and going online can be difficult. But MIND has got a suite of fantastic resources um, to help you understand, but also um, so that you can signpost people to more ways of managing their mental health online. And I think that mental health has also been something that's, that's been raised um, up as an issue during this current time for many households. So here's another set of resources. This is one of the things that I know these um, webinars are trying to do is to really circulate all the good resources. So the resources in the, the bottom half are all on um, Digital Unite. So you just when you get the presentation, you can just click on the link. And um, as, I, as I've mentioned, we've got the um, health training as well. So we have a whole dedicated area in the network. And we are also currently giving some free licenses for training uh, if you want to join the network at this time, just to help people um, through the crisis. So obviously there's a real challenge to providing digital skills help remotely. It's not the same as sitting in a room with somebody or with a group of people. So we were interested to find out from our, um, our uh, community of champions what their biggest issues were and then look at ways of solving them. But before we go on, we're just going to ask you what your main challenge is. I'm going to hand over to James now because he's going to run another little poll. Well, actually, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not, Cathy, because I've just remembered that I haven't set this one up properly. I've just looked. OK, at it. it's not set up quite right. But what I what I suggest people do is if you can um, let us know in the chat, um, perhaps if you can just pick the number, it will make us make it a bit easier. If you can just pick which of the numbers on here has been your top challenge for providing digital skills remotely. Yeah, that would be great. Just um... we'll ask Francis to do a bit of on the fly data analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a bit of pressure, Francis. That's the most uh, challenging. Sorry about that. While while uh, that's happening, we'll perhaps come back to that when we do the chat. Kathy, do you, would you like to explain? Um, yeah. So. Um, We'll, we'll be really interested to see what your um, challenges are, your top challenges are, once um, Francis has done his on-the-fly um, evaluation um, and a bit of research. But meanwhile, I'm just going to share the results that we had from the champions um, in our network. And this, was a, this is the order that it came in, and the top three there. I'm just going to go through with some top tips to overcome some of those. I'm sure there's other tips that people can share with us after, which we'd be really grateful for, but just um, I'll share what we've, where we've got to so far with these. So, so looking at the first challenge, which is trying to describe a task rather than do it, um, if you're helping a beginner with, say, using email, start by talking to them about what email is, how it works, what it means um, they'll be able to do and what they'll need to use it. So sort of really break it down as a story. Um, it's really important to avoid jargon or use the language that they're using. If it's a pointer rather than a cursor or a button rather than a computer key or a main screen rather than a home page, then try and use those references themselves. You know, use the language they're using. Um, remember that not, or not all the details are important. Um, 
and you only really need to show people one way to do something. Nothing can be more infuriating than explaining that you know seven ways to do something. Um, just, just think about what's the most straightforward way and focus on that. And also give people a chance to practice. If there's one thing we definitely have at the moment, it's a bit more time. So um, use that to help people try and figure stuff out for themselves where possible and, and give it a go. Um, the other tip would be to make your own demo. So if you can record your own screen in some way and send it over, that's a very nice way of showing somebody um, how to do something. So the second challenge was not being able to see my learner's screen. So our sort of tips for that would be to try and use the same browser or device as the learner so that you can see what they see. Uh, you can also take some screenshots and send them over and give instructions for each, each image and um, the learner can then walk themselves through. Uh, be on the phone, so even be on the, um, on the landline or the mobile if they're on a tablet so that you can actually kind of help talk them through and they can tell you what they're seeing and you can say, uh, give them some ideas about what to do next. And remember to break down any task into lots of different, different tasks, smaller tasks, so that it can feel like progress has been made even if you don't get to the end because if somebody gets very frustrated, it'd be good to feel, well, we've made progress, we can at least, you know, open the browser or we've at least found the NHS website or something like that. Um, and also encourage your learner to make notes because then they can refer to those later. And I think for a lot of particularly older people, they're used to having stuff written down. So that's really good. So the third challenge uh, is obviously the unstable or poor internet connection. And Again, try and be as close to the router. I'm actually in a room next to my router today for this call. Uh, it's always worth trying to plug in, hardwire yourself, or for them to do that. Um, resetting everything, restarting everything, obviously always good advice. It's worth trying to contact the providers because sometimes it's, if it's very bad and people, especially if people are paying for a particular service, um, there might be something that's going wrong locally and it'd be good to find out from the provider or they might be able to improve things. Really, um, uh, focus on it as well. If it's an issue, then it's worth spending some time before you run any other sessions with somebody to try and sort it out. And always have a backup plan, something that you'll discuss or chat about over the phone or send them something via email so that you can resume at another time when the internet is in a better shape. So we really wanted to share some of our great stories as well because I said that we have these wonderful champions in our network and they are always keen to share um, some their successes and where things have really made life-changing differences. And we wanted to share some of those as kind of a bit of inspiration and, 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 and a thank you to everybody who, who works with people. The um, first story here in the blue was um, really quite moving because um, the guy hadn't um, seen a human face for five days. And um, since he's been helped um, by a digital champion, he's joined at least one virtual group a day. And he often provides the music for their walk and talk group as well. So he's really got involved in his local community from that. So that's really good. Um, so you can see the other, other case studies there, helping people um, get back into employment and sort their finances out um, to even getting a date with the guy across the road. Um, there's unintended consequences of all sorts of things with the coronavirus and one of them is that mainstream events have been going online in a massive way and that has in some ways really leveled the playing field for people who are stuck at home anyway or perhaps find it difficult to get out for whatever reason. So even when we do go back to the normal, whatever that is, I do hope that as a society we really hold on to those things that have worked well for everybody and been much more inclusive. And uh, finally, um, we are here to help you. So we've pulled together some of our most relevant digital guides to help you and your learners around staying connected, health and well-being, and having fun online. And for volunteers uh, in the community or frontline staff in small charities who are not already in the network, we've got 100 free licenses to give away. Uh, I think we've got about 50 of those left. So do get in touch or pass it on to anybody you think might be interested. And we're also building a suite of guides for digital champions who are giving remote support. And our first three are going live this week and they cover top tips, ideas, how to overcome some of the challenges as we've discussed today. 
and you can also sign up for our newsletter if you want to be kept up to date with any new guides or content just get in touch with Catherine or myself um, but also if you've got any questions or like to discuss how we could help or want to talk about what the work that you're doing we'd always be really happy to hear from you right thank I you. think I think, I think is, I think that is it thank you so we'll move over to the question and answers in just a second I'll just give Francis a minute just to get um, some ideas for who we'll, who we'll turn to first. Um, I'll just apologise that the captions that we have running here haven't been working perfectly for Cathy. I know that some of you have mentioned in the chat that that hasn't been uh, ideal for you. Unfortunately, the way that we're doing this, it's worth mentioning just in case you're interested, is I am presenting my screen on my computer, um, which is PowerPoint running on Office 365, which enables you to use subtitles and it's picking up my voice from my microphone quite well but unfortunately it's struggling to pick up Kathy's voice so that's why you've seen some imperfect subtitling for her. Either way I'm going to turn that off now and we should be able to see you all and we can have a nice little wave again. Check that everyone's still happy and paying attention. Looks like there's lots of you there who are uh, enjoying this so it's great to see you. Uh, I'll hand over to Francis to pick out someone to ask a question. Okay um, so Robert I'm just gonna unmute you unless you can unmute yourself. Robert's asked can we have more info about free licenses for charities? I think that's a question for uh, DC and Robert, is that is there anything else you want to say about that question? Uh, that was yeah, that was to Kathy. She mentioned it just at the end about we've got some charities in um, Southampton running some of our community libraries, so um, they might be interested in that. Yeah, well, certainly, um, do get in touch on the the um, slides slide show that you're going to get back. There's a link to that, but if you also go onto our website, you can see that. It's on the front, front page of digitalunite.com. And I think so, um, Catherine's just dropped the link in the oh. chat as well. Or oh, Catherine's just dropped the link in the chat. Thanks, Catherine. Um, April, I'm, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, is there funding available to get people, get devices for people? Um, uh, April, if you want to say anything more about that question, or is that. Uh, yeah, I um, work for a housing well the housing department for a local council and a lot of our properties are independent living and they won't have devices so is there funding available for us to tap into to offer so to I'll, I'll try and answer that one first off um, there is an initiative which is supported by the government department for digital culture media and skills called future.now they okay. set up an initiative called devices.now um, I will drop the link in the chat shortly and I'll share it when we share all the resources with you at the end of this call. Um, they are offering devices to people who are registered through the UK Online Centres Network, which is run by Good Things Foundation. So if you are registered already, then you should be able to access devices. We've had a delivery or possibly two deliveries of devices in our Brighton and Hove projects. So we're starting to get those devices out now. If you're not currently registered as a UK online centre, then you can also apply for devices, but that's going to be coming through a second um, phase of their project. So you might have a bit more of a delay in getting hold of devices. I don't know if um, Kathy or Catherine, you want to add anything to that? No. Okay. So hopefully, I, hopefully that helps April. I think it's something that a lot of people are um, trying to tackle at the moment. The other option is to try and see if you could replicate something like that at a local level um, sometimes there are local businesses that might have some devices spare or be willing to donate they may wish to do that through some of the community mutual aid networks that have been forming so that might be something else to explore and a future session we're going to hopefully cover that sort of side of things not on devices specifically but on how you can link in with some of the other community efforts that are happening thank you thanks everyone um Una, you've asked about the guides and the, the, the level of the, the guides that are available from Unite. Um, I'm, oh, 
just gonna check you're unmuted. You know, I can't find your name to unmute you. There you go. <laughs> Do you want to um, say a bit more about your question, Una? And maybe Cathy and Cath um, Catherine might be able to. Yeah, it was an example. I was uh, going to do online meetings with a small group of people and we looked at Zoom. And it turns out the phone couldn't really cope with Zoom. Um, so we needed to look at something else. So Messenger was suggested and WhatsApp was suggested. Um, and we went to look at WhatsApp, so I was looking for a guide on how to use it, a really simple one. But it, most of the guides start with, you know, all the features that are in there and how you use them. And what I really wanted was a step-by-step, -step, this is how to get hold of the app and download it and, you know, what you first do with it. So really, really simple things. So um, a couple of things to say about that, Una. So one is that um, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, unfortunately, but someone in Nottinghamshire yesterday sent through a detailed guide to using Zoom. I mean, their language was for grandparents, but I think what they meant is is for beginners, for people who've not used Zoom before. The other thing is to say is that on our session last week, uh, Diversity and Ability mentioned some alternatives to Zoom, which might be simpler. So one is whereby, whereby um, I think it's just whereby.com, so that's about where, w-h-e-r-e, by, b-y, dot com, and that's a slightly simpler system. People don't have to have downloaded anything, um, you can just send them a link. Um, and there are similar, there are other options like that that work in the same way, so that, that's what I'd recommend there. You can go back and watch the video from our session last week on our website. Kathy or Catherine, anything on that? Oh, Catherine's just... Oh, oh yes. Yeah, so the guides on our website, and um, they're all, you know, very straightforward language, and um, for beginners. So, I think Catherine's dropped a, a link into our WhatsApp guide. So, yeah, do, it's worth having a look. Excellent. So, um, if I can move on to some other questions, um, there's a few that I'd like to sort of group together, really, rather than picking a specific one. And there was also a response to the second poll, which was around um, difficulties and obstacles towards helping people where there are additional needs, accessibility issues. Um, a few people have mentioned this, and Jeremy, for example, said as well about support for people who um, speak or use English as a second language. So, um, <laughs> as a whole webinar in itself at least but are there, is anyone would like to respond uh, James or yeah, Catherine, yeah. Catherine about that whole issue of um, you know when there's an obstacle in the initial obstacle in the way to someone learning yeah so um, people with English as a second language came up on last week's call as well and I have put out some invitations to some of the organizations that we also work with about doing a session on that so that will be coming up in the near future it won't be until the 14th of May at the earliest I'm afraid because we've got some other things booked in but um, we will do a session on English as a second language. The organisation, one of the organisations we're hoping to do that with is Clarion Futures. I mentioned that they're part of the One Digital programme that um, Digital Unite are also in with us and they've previously run a session on that topic in a face-to-face -face event that we were part of and on the One Digital website there's a page about that which I shared after last um, week session and I can share it again it's got a few useful tips in there about that um, one is around um, your, uh, yourselves as um, supporters and perhaps learners as well learning how to add a third person to a phone telephone call so that you can add a translator that can often be helpful it's just a really basic way around things using Google Translate as um, I think Kathy mentioned already on this call um, and then there's, there's obviously further resources. I don't know if you want to say any more about that, um, Catherine or Catherine. Yeah, um, well, in terms of other obstacles such as accessibility, I know someone mentioned learning um, difficulties. Um, Cathy said in her presentation earlier, we have accessibility courses that were done with AbilityNet and obviously AbilityNet are joining Citizens Online next week. But if you take advantage of our free membership offer on the network, you'll have access to these. They're kind of five to six bite-sized courses and they cover things like visual impairment, um, as I say, learning disabilities, heart being hard of hearing, dexterity issues. Um, so it's well worth taking advantage of the offer. It will give you some good, good advice there. And, and these courses were done in conjunction with AbilityNet as well. 
I'll, I'll, we'll, say, we'll say more about that um, next week's session with AbilityNet shortly. Um, I think Mark's on the call with us, so he'll be introducing that once we get to the further resources section. Okay, uh, ready for another one? <laughs> uh, so a couple of people, um, Penny and, um, sorry, I've lost track of the other person who mentioned it. The um, issue around um, safeguarding when you're offering and providing remote support to learners. So um, people might have concerns about, uh, you know, you, if you kind of remote log into the machine and that sort of thing. Um, just looking at uh, Penny, do you, do you want to say a little bit about your, more about your question, if you can unmute yourself? I've, I've unmuted Penny, I think. Great, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, James. Um, Yes, yeah, so we're running a digital hotline in Dorset. Um, so people ring into the hotline, the triage team, that's people at the council. I work for Dorset Council. Um, so people at the council then put them through to one of our normal digital champions, volunteer digital champions. And that way, um, the number of the uh, learner is protected. The number of the digital champion is protected. And we have no email contact between between the two people so um so it, it's trying to create that safe safeguarding wall between them um uh, in both directions and uh, you know we, we we thought long and hard before we went down that route um because obviously it's so much easier if you're trying to help somebody if you can share screens and i know there's there are apps that enable you to do that really simply um are we being too cautious, do you think? Um, uh, what, what are other people doing? Yeah, but it would be interesting to hear if anyone else does want to talk about what they're doing. Um, I'll just mention when we talked about this um, last week with diversity and ability, we mentioned a couple of things because we were talking about using, for instance, Zoom has the functionality, as you've all seen today, to share my screen, but it also has functionality for remote control if you've got a um, a certain level of account you can use remote control for someone else's device so we talked a little bit about the private potential privacy concerns around that we the first thing we emphasize is it's it best probably to do that where you've already got a relationship of trust with the person so that might be from someone that you had as an existing learner before you were doing remote support or it might be once you've already built up quite a strong relationship with them through sessions where you're just providing phone support or video call support but without any um, screen sharing or remote control. Um, the other things that we mentioned once you perhaps get to that point is that of course you can, you should be um, honest with participants about what's happening and give them some sense of control over what's happening. So preventing screen sharing or remote control when passwords are being entered or there's any kind of sensitive information like that. Um, we, we perhaps think a bit about putting together a a simple piece of information about this that's like one side that covers the main points. I don't know if you've got anything like that already, Catherine or Cathy. No, no, we don't. And we'd be interested to hear what other people are doing. I, I guess to Cathy's point in her slides, there are obviously different contexts when it comes to sharing screens, as James mentioned. Lots of people are helping friends and family, lots of people who are running existing sessions. Um, before the, the lockdown will manage to get the email addresses of the learners they already had relationships with. So there's, I think there's different, definitely kind of variations of the advice depending on who you're helping, but very interested to hear other people's experience. I think Anne Walker, I think you were perhaps about to talk about an experience. I think Anne no, Penny's talking. basically asked her question for her, I think, unless you want to say anything more, Anne. Is, is there anyone who's um, been doing remote control and who'd like to share how they've been doing that and how it's been going? I can't see anyone raising a hand, but do mention it in the chat if you've, if you've been doing that and you'd like to share um, any experiences. I wondered if we could maybe invite Phil, Phil Brannigan's posted on that, um, who I think has got quite a bit of experience as a DC, as a, others I'm sure, but just about some of those things around giving out personal numbers or email addresses, um, you know, <laughs> how to not have to do that as a, as a digital champion. Phil has Phil, uh, certainly got some experience, haven't you, Phil? I think you're digital <laughs> champion of the year, aren't you, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, thank you for that, yes. Um, personal stuff is just basically a no-no. 
Um, I have a totally separate phone, so it's nothing to do with my personal phone, just a cheap one. And I just set up separate email accounts so that even if the learner does get hold of my email account, it doesn't actually matter. It's just set up. I just put the letters DC in it for digital champion and it keeps everything totally separate. And that way you don't actually have any issues at all. If you do ever have a situation where you think, right, I'm not going to be with this learner anymore. Uh, I just, I just delete that. And there's also no sort of GDPR problems either because I'm not keeping a record of anything. I can just get rid of it all. So um, that's the safest way to do things. Just think to yourself, get myself a cheap smartphone, just set up a simple Gmail account and then off you go. And that's all you need really. Great, thanks Bill. I hope that's answered lots of questions. We've perhaps missed um, some. Is there, I'll just give Francis one quick chance to um, identify anything while I get ready to share my screen and I can just share some final resources with people. Should we just get a little temperature check before I do that? Is everyone happy? Everyone managed to get something that they came for? Little thumbs up if so. Excellent, good, that's good to see. Um, if you would like to, it would help us if you sort of put in the chat what was the most useful thing for you today or some other piece of feedback that you'd like to give, uh, something new that you learned, something like that. Uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. And I'll just say quickly, thanks everyone. Some really good contributions <clears throat> and questions in the chat. I'm sorry if we didn't quite get to everyone's uh, individual point, but hopefully we've covered most of the things. So we'll come to some of our resources that we have. Um, if you've been on our previous calls, these might be getting a bit familiar to you, but I think we've got some new, new people on the call too. So the first thing to mention is that we have a blog post that covers our key um, perspectives on how to help someone taking their first steps online. Um, so that's at the link that you can see there. And as I've mentioned a few times, you will get all these slides sent around to you after the call. Um, yeah, on, on our site as well, a particular list of resources, uh, links to all sorts of places uh, around uh, setting up video calls for using various apps and uh, advice for remote working and uh, conferencing and uh, plenty of stuff there around digital champions. Uh, we're basically signposting people onto the Digital Unite site. Uh, that's where all the good stuff is to be found. So but that's, we've got that list on, on our website, citizensonline.org.uk. And also our project in Brighton and Hove, our very successful project has been running down there for a few years. Uh, I've got their own list, um, some similar things there about around digital support, some different things, and um, the links on there about around the devices, devices.now, and that kind of thing. Some of the information there is Brighton and Hove specific, but most of it is, is, is general. So have a look at that site as well. Uh, I've just put this in here once more to remind everyone the key things from Digital Unite. So you've already got access to free digital skills guides that are particularly relevant for right now. They've got this offer of free membership to the G Digital Champions Network, which we really recommend. We found that really useful for our digital champions and it's an amazing offer to have that free. And then finally, there's dedicated guides on being a remote digital champion, which hopefully address some of the things that we've been talking about in this Q&A today. Please do follow them on Twitter at Digital Unite. Uh, next time, uh, we will be talking a bit more about remote digital skills support and with a bit of an emphasis on accessibility, which I know is something that came up a little bit in the questions today. We'll be with special guests AbilityNet, uh, who we've mentioned a few times. Hopefully, Mark from AbilityNet is on the call. And Mark, you can tell us a little bit more about AbilityNet. If not, Mark might not be on the call. Doesn't seem like he is, unfortunately. No, Mark's not on the call. So I will just mention that AbilityNet um, was established in 1998. It's another of these organisations that's been going for quite a while. And they're focused on empowering disabled and older people by enabling them to adapt technology to their specific needs. So they have a network of over 300 DBS Czech volunteers who are providing normally at home support and at the moment remote support as they also do the rest of the time. 
they've got um, a lot of fact sheets and they have their own platform called My Computer My Way, which has got um, training guides and resources. They've also got a free helpline and they, their DCs, at least on the last calls they've been mentioning, are um, twiddling their thumbs a little bit at the moment. They're still waiting to get set up to be doing remote support. So please, if you've got a project and you're looking for people to help people, then you can mention their helpline. On the call next week, they'll be talking about their series of webinars that they're running, a bit like ours, but with their own focus on the topics that they want to cover. Um, they've run sessions on staying in touch with family and friends, finding local support, and running accessible online meetings. And they've had about 1,900 people signed up during their first few weeks, so their sessions are really worth attending. Um, but obviously, come along to our session with them next week and you'll get a bit of a taster of, of what they can offer. So that's it for today. Just time for me to say thank you to all of you for coming. I hope it's been enjoyable and useful to you. And um, if you do have any questions, feel free to email me or if you feel like your question is more appropriate to Francis, then email him. Um, you'll get an email from me later today, which will include links to the slides, uh, the, an, an edited version of the chat from today, where I'll just pick out um, the key things that people are signposting to. You'll also get a link to the video recording in case that's useful to you or anyone else who wasn't able to make the call. And you'll get an invitation to next week's session. Uh, we do rely on registration for that, so do make sure you register if you want to attend. I think that's everything. So thanks again for coming. And I'll stop sharing my screen so we can see each other again and say goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.